am here to talk about the man, known only as Heathcliff, and his masterful plan for revenge on the people who caused him harm. Adopted by Mr. Earnshaw as a child, Heathcliff, Heathcliff quickly became Mr. Earnshaw's favorite of the three children, Catherine, Henley, and Heathcliff. He was not liked by many due to his skin color in the place that he came from. The jealousy of the children caused, causes them to try and harm Heathcliff and cause bad situations for him. Eventually, this brings about Heathcliff's desire for revenge and he becomes determined to carry out a plan of revenge on the characters. The question is, how was Heathcliff able to come up with a masterful plan to gain the Earnshaw and Linton fortunes and get revenge on the people who caused him harm? His character and personality enabled him to carry out his plans so completely. There are many adjectives that can describe Heathcliff. Ruthless, manipulative, and methodical are just a few. Heathcliff is ruthless once he starts his plan for revenge. He will stop at nothing to get revenge on the people that he believes caused him harm. He can easily manipulate people to get what he needs, which gives him an advantage. He can exploit other people's weaknesses to gain the advantage on them. Heathcliff is methodical in the way that he concocts his plan for revenge. He is very secretive and his true intentions are very difficult to discern. He takes his time in order to accomplish his goals. He is manipulative and is very good at getting people to do what he needs them to do in order to accomplish his goals. The people in this novel are very ignorant of what Heathcliff's true intentions are. He uses these characteristics to gain power over those he views as his enemies and he will stop at nothing to get what he wants. This combination of characteristics makes Heathcliff the perfect sociopath and a danger to anyone that stands in his way. Heathcliff was very good getting people to bend to his will even at a young age. So from the very beginning he bred bad feeling in the house and that Mrs. Earnshaw's death which happened in less than two years after the young master had learned to regard his father as an oppressor rather than a friend, and Heathcliff as a usurper of his parents' affections and his privileges. And he grew bitter with brooding over these injuries. This describes Henley's feelings toward Heathcliff, which he could not act on until after his father's death. The abuse that Heathcliff suffered under Henley fueled his need for revenge. Henley was very abusive, treating Heathcliff like a servant after Mr. Earnshaw died. Heathcliff always vowed that he would get revenge on Henley for the way that he treated him after Mr. Earnshaw's death. I'm trying to settle how I shall pay Henley back. I don't care how long I wait. If I can only do it at last, I hope he will not die before I do. He got his revenge on Henley when they were adults by slowly gaining control over Henley by continuing to loan him money to pay off his gambling debts. Eventually, Henley's debt to Heathcliff became so large that Henley is forced to give up the property of Wuthering Heights to Heathcliff. Another example of Heathcliff's character was his domination over Isabel. She was very naive and became easy to manipulate. When Heathcliff returned after an absence of three years, she fell in love with him. Her attraction to Heathcliff is revealed during an argument with Catherine, who tells Isabella, It is impossible that you can covet the admiration of Heathcliff that you can consider him an agreeable person. I haven't misunderstood you, Isabella. No, you have not, said the infatuated girl. I love him more than you ever loved Edgar, and he might love me if you would let him. Heathcliff didn't encourage this behavior until he realized that it could be of use to him. With the marriage, Heathcliff made himself part of the Linton family, and he took another step towards gaining his revenge on Edgar for taking Catherine away from him. Edgar's death and Heathcliff's gaining custody of his son gave him the opportunity to arrange the marriage between Cathy and Linton, giving Heathcliff control over Thrush Cross Grange. Isabella was used by Heathcliff to help him gain control of the Linton estate. She was nothing more than a pawn in his plans, which he realized shortly after she married Heathcliff. However, at the end of his life, Heathcliff was not able to carry out his plan to its completion. I think his love for Catherine and his de desire to communicate with her ghost showed a desperate and unhappy man who was losing his grip on those around him. Eventually, Heathcliff feels despair in his inability to communicate with Catherine's ghost. He loses his will for revenge and says, It is a poor conclusion, is it not? 
an absurd termination to my violent exertions. I get levers and mattocks to demolish the two houses and train myself to be capable of working like Hercules. And when everything is ready and in my power, I find the will to lift the slate off either roof has vanished. My old enemies have beaten me. Now it would be the precise time to avenge myself on their representatives. I could do it, and none could hinder me. But where is the use? I don't care for striking. I can't take it, the trouble to raise my hand. That sounds as if I had been laboring the whole time, only to exhibit a fine trait of magnanimity. It is far from being the case. I have lost the faculty of everything their destruction, and I am too idle to destroy for nothing. This shows, at the end, Heathcliff loses his will for revenge, and his plot is finally over. When Heathcliff stops trying to destroy their lives, Kathy and Harriton are given the chance to have a healthier relationship than most of the other characters in the novel.